Lila, I don't know if you watched Alien, but you reminded me of a kid version of the main character Ripley. As you're crawling through the vents, you got your squirt gun when, instead of a flamethrower. The um, ironic thing is, is Lila Brown is actually really good friends with Sigourney Weaver. So oh, she was cool. actually able to, to call her on set and have a chat to her about how best to react to a, a puppet creature, you know? It was wild. Yeah, on the day that we filmed the one where I'm looking into Gunter's apartment, that was the day that um, I talked to Sigourney about how to react to a to a spider. Yeah, it was really it was really good day. Today on the show, we're joined with director Kia Roche Turner and young rising star Alila Brown. Together, they are part of the new creature feature called Sting. Sting is in theaters right now all across North America. And what's so cool about this horror comedy is that it's an absolute love letter to some of the greatest sci-fi and action flicks from The Thing, Alien, Predator, Terminator, and much more. It's cool to pick Kia's brain about how all these ideas came to life and also get to talk to Alila during this time in her career. She's an absolute gem, and even though she's so young, she's full of knowledge, experience, and a lot of fun stories that you're gonna hear in this interview. I had so much fun talking to both of them, and yeah, let's get right into it. Absolutely loved the film, and one thing I loved the most about it was, even beyond like seeing the trailer, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a horror, but it was also really funny, and also I noticed like kind of a love letter to a lot of older classic like sci-fis and action movies that I wasn't expecting. And I kind of want to know, like, just almost like your inspiration to bring this to life and what made you pick Alila as the perfect Charlotte? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I grew up watching all the 80s horror films, um, you know, like uh, The Goonies and um, Alien and Jaws and, you know, all that stuff. You know, there's a little bit of John Carpenter's The Thing in there in terms of tone and, like, you know, single location um, and the fact that they're trapped in a cold climate, you know, that's very the thing. Um, I didn't really pick a Lila. Um, uh, basically when, when it came to casting, we knew that if we didn't get Charlotte, right, we didn't have a movie. And when we went to the casting director, Nikki Barrett and just said, look, we're looking for, she just went, shh, cast a Lila Brown. <laughs> like she just said, this is the girl you need. All you have to do is convince her to be in the movie. And, and, and yeah, like she's going to elevate your film. And, and she did. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing, too. And Alila, I didn't realize till after the film, uh, I covered another one of your films this year, The the Secret Kingdom, and talked to the director of that. And yeah. what I thought was cool is I didn't even realize till later after I read your IMDb. And I don't know if you shot that film a long time ago or if you had like a growth spurt like Sting and just like <laughs> it blew up. But uh, yeah, it's just like really cool to see you like in front of like another um another like almost CG built film. And I kind of want to know, like, just um, do you like uh, have any like challenges, like kind of imagining these different creatures and stuff in front of you and being able to like act in front of it? Yeah. Um, I shot Secret Kingdom. It was my first ever movie role. And it feels like literal, like years and years ago, probably because it kind of was in my short life. Um, it was quite a significant time ago. I was nine when I shot that. Um, and I was 13 when I shot Sting. Uh, in in Sting, the um, most of the spider SFX were practical effects. They weren't done in post. So it was incredible to be able to react to a real creature in front of you. And I think that that also brings it kind of back to the nostalgic older um, horror films because all of those have actors screaming and acting at the um, creatures in front of them. Yeah, that's awesome. And even Kia, like, a, I'm sure that was important for you to almost like being influenced by those older films to have like a bit of realism in front of you and mix the practical with the SFX. Yeah, I um, I mean, I think digital is amazing. And I think if used correctly, it's, you know, phenomenal. Like, you know, but somebody like Christopher Nolan does it really well. It's like he only uses it when he absolutely has to. Has to. And it's like, like, if you can have a thing in front of an actor to experience the world that you're trying to project to the audience, um, why wouldn't you? Like, and if you can build a giant 
puppeteered spider that has articulated arms and legs and a mouth that opens with like actual venom spraying out of it that you can actually have come up to an actor and like interact with them like Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you do that like it seems like you know horror is a tactile medium and like if you're trying to have them convinced that like a digital creature is after them there's no gravity or weight to it and so you know if you give them you know an actual creature that's in 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 real time you know you're giving them another actor almost to perform with you know so yeah i mean it just it seems natural to me to build a thing to become um that 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 horror um creature that, that you're after you know why why not build it especially yeah, if you can get access to like richard taylor and weta who are like the best of the best of the best of the best you know like why wouldn't you work with them you know yeah, that's um, so cool. Like, it sounds like you guys just had like a great playground too. And even uh, Alila with your character, Charlotte, I kind of want to know, like in the film, she was just had no problem handling the spider, like no fear, even like crawling through vents, ready to fight, you know? But how about you as a person? Are you afraid of spiders or do you have that type of bravery within you? Um. Yeah, I'm actually not scared of spiders. I, I, I think they're really cute and they're very interesting animals because they're so unusual. Um, but I found it really fun to do all the stunts. It's just, it's always like the best. And I had just come off Furiosa where I got to do all these stunts. And then I went into Sting and I also got to do all these stunts. And I always have so much fun crawling through ducks and stuff, you know, jumping onto a ladder, crawling up. And then like, I remember one of the days, um, we were filming me looking through Helga's um into Helga's or Gunter's um apartment and it was so pretty in there. It's been like the set is incredible. Um and I remember there was like a ladder and it was there was an air conditioning vent um going straight and then into two L's. So I filmed going I was in one of the L um the so there's like a crossbar between the um two air conditioning vents and then here's the um Gunter's apartment and then I would go here crawl across but I'd also have to get a ladder to go up into the mm -hmm. vent and it was so much fun because I had to like uh, it was like quite high up in um on the set because I was looking down in the whole apartment I don't think any of that made sense but I just oh. remember I was following you. That's so cool. And even uh, as uh, Kia, you mentioned, there is some alien influence to uh, Alila. I don't know if you watched Alien, but you reminded me of a kid version of the main character, Ripley. As you're crawling through the vents, you got your squirt gun when, instead of a flamethrower. And have you watched that film? Because uh, you reminded me of, of her. Yeah, I have. Awesome. I think yeah and it was a direct rip off of Alien and Aliens and you know I'm glad that you noticed that like I was just trying to write a character that would be like a, a younger version of Ellen Ripley the um ironic thing is is Alila Brown is actually really good friends with Sigourney Weaver so oh, she was cool. actually able to to call her on set and have a chat to her about how best to react to a, a puppet creature you know it was wild that's amazing oh that's so cool and even yeah obviously that's that's cool how i caught that vibe from you and you're actually talking to sigourney weaver in between takes and yeah on the day that we filmed the one where i'm looking into gunter's apartment that was the day that um i talked to sigourney about how to react to a to a spider um yeah it was really it was a really good day very it's cool. funny, actually, Alila Brown, even though, you know, she was only, she just turned 13 when we were filming, so 12, 13, um, she's actually a really good action star. Like some people, some actors have it, some people don't. And she's got an ability to move in a gymnastic fashion. And she's got like a sixth sense that some actors have of like how to angle her body and move fluidly for the lens like not just in real life but the lens captures the fluidity and that's something that Sigourney Weaver does beautifully she just looks great when she's carrying around a flamethrower and looking scared or mm -hmm. somebody like um you know Bruce Willis in Die Hard this guy just moves well and to have like a, a 12 year old know how to do that I was just like so lucky man you know it's yeah the camera loves her yeah yeah even outside the action like I want to say to uh Alila, like your emotions from like the serious scenes when like drama was happening you just put it all out there and uh, 
I think um it's very cool to talk to you right now because I feel like it's going to be an interesting uh, time in your career and I can see you just shooting to the moon. I know you got the the next film like uh, on your plate is the Sonic one, which is super huge too. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you can't say too much about that, but uh, did you get any time with Jim Carrey and did you get to like speak to him or learn any like other acting tips on top of that or? Yeah, sadly, I can't actually talk about that or understandable. Um, um, anything about that. Um, I wish I could, but in December, all will be revealed. So wait till then and you'll know it all. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble either. So yeah. Um, in trouble either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll move on. But uh, yeah, Kia, even I... I as we're talking about all these different like action uh, like famous action homages you put in i didn't realize how many there were right until frank the exterminator said the predator line about if we could it bleeds it could, we can kill it if it bleeds and, we can kill it yes <laughs> i changed it, it just enough to not have a lawsuit yeah <laughs> yes and then it just started making me think of the whole movie and then getting these tropes and even yeah. Not to spoil anything, uh, there's a big nod to the Terminator, like leaning down the tail end of the film and everything. And it's just something that made yeah. me smile. And it was almost like making me think it's like this guy was like raised on the same films as me, like watching this unfold. Yeah. And and also like some sometimes it's not even me directly ripping off. Like because I watched those films, I must I, I must have watched like Aliens like 50 times when I was a kid. Yeah. So those scenes, even like, you know, the scene like in Evil Dead 2 when, you know, it zooms into his face and he connects the thing to his hand and he goes, groovy. Like that's just in my head. Like I can't get it out. Like it's on repeat again and again and again. So a lot of these references find their way into my screenplays without me even knowing about it, just because I'm so inundated with those movies that like, it's just kind of part of who I am now, you know? So sometimes I'm not ripping them off. I just, I just don't even know I'm doing it, you know? So yeah, it's yeah, that's um, amazing. It's it sounds like it's just coming from your heart and soul. You know, it's just like you live through the, these movies. So it's just what's coming out of you too. And even Alila, I got another question for you as well too, because I've seen you in the secret kingdom. I've seen you in this right now. You're wearing a children of the corn shirt, which I heard you were in as well. What do you, oh, that's, there's you, there's you, that's awesome. Who else do you know who's been on a shirt? Like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I know, eh? But um, I wanted, I wanted to ask too, um, do you prefer the more edgier stuff over the, the family-friendly stuff? Because I know you're doing both back and forth with a lot of your films and uh, just is, do you have like a general like dream of yours as your future of like the type of films you want to do? Yeah, I think I really like dark and in-depth screenplay, but I also have a couple of family-oriented um, films that I have lined up, and I think that they're also, like, really fun. At least the two scripts I have, they're, like, incredible, both filmed in beautiful locations. So I feel like it's so individual for each screenplay, and I feel like family-oriented could also have lots of heart and kind of lots of emotion behind it, even if it's not shown and even if that's only really picked up on by the um, adults watching the film. I feel like it's very interesting being able to play characters from both and really it's all the same, both acting in the character. And I feel like there's not much consideration of genre when I'm excited about a role. I just think about, oh, that scene, that'll be so much fun to shoot. Oh, it'll be so pretty where I'm shooting and stuff like that. And I, I really just every role that I am able to be a part of, I just get so excited about the script and the character and all the other classmates and stuff. That's so exciting. And I'm happy you're loving what you're doing as well. And um, Kia, I just wanted to say like a lot of people gravitate to these segments who are creators to themselves. And uh, maybe as like a final question, um, if somebody's listening to this and they got a big idea, maybe like sting that they want to bring to life uh would you have any like general advice for somebody trying to step into the film industry and make something um i mean like nike just do it you know what i mean like and that's that was my philosophy at the end of the day um I, the first film i made took three and a half years 
Like we shot for three and a half years over right. a period of months and I funded it myself. Um, and it succeeded. It was successful. It got globally distributed and it did really well. So like believe in yourself no matter how long it takes because if you want it and you can picture it in here, you can make it happen, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't listen and to the haters. Yeah, yeah. And Alila, would you have any advice for a young aspiring actress who is maybe listening to you right now? Um, I think the best experience you can ever get is being on set. So do anything you can to get on set and learn from being on set. And I've been so fortunate to be on set since I was six, which is incredible. And like all of my acting comes from prior experiences and there's no other way to put it. That's the only way I've gotten to this kind of amazing level where I can work with everybody like Kia up to George Miller. And I think I'm just so happy that I've, that I'm an actor. I know it's very broad, but I mean, you just got to get on set, got to get in short films or anything you can do. And you learn, you learn so much being on set. Yeah. So just, just do it, you know, just like Kia said, Nike, just do it. Yeah. Well said. And uh, yeah. Uh, appreciate uh, meeting both of you. Love the film. Happy release week. And uh, I'm a new fan. And hopefully I could talk to both of you around like your next project next time. Yes. Hopefully honey. that'll be Sting too. Oh, yes. yeah. Let's go. Cliffhangers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, media day. And uh, yeah, hopefully catch you soon. See Cross. you later. Bye, Sean. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that talk with Kia and Lila. Like we mentioned, Sting is in theaters right now, right across North America. Definitely check it out if you want some laughs, some jump scares. And really, if you're just into a good time, you know? I personally love these kind of movies, and it's always extra fun to talk to the people who made them. Also, to break the fourth wall on the interview, and uh, not meaning to take any shots at any past guests, but I had a little chuckle after the interview, just thinking about how, even though Alila's still a kid, she handles media better than a lot of adults I've had on this show. <laughs> so kudos to her. Like I said, she's got like such a bright future. And I feel like even beyond talent, just like the attitude and spirit is going to take her right to the moon. So again, Kia, Alila, thanks for the good vibes today. And speaking of good vibes, we can't go without thanking all you legends on the Patreon page supporting the show. First up... Huge thanks to Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel. If you're into electronics, technology, how they work, and most importantly, how to fix them, check out Testing with Mike on YouTube. Another big thanks to the lovely Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. Beyond being the host of Top 10 Nerd and talking to a million subscribers, Amanda has her very own YouTube channel. You gotta check out if you're into it. comic books, movies, video games, and all things nerdy. That's Amanda McKnight on YouTube. Another big thanks to the wonderful Jenny Potter, the legend Devin McBride, back-to-back -back double impact Allens, the number one gent Alan Kent, and big wig Alan Briggs. Another big thanks to our favorite soul singer, Saber, and last but not least, Francis Coffer, aka my mom. If you want to shout out at the end of every episode and also get these episodes early, raw, uncut, right when I'm done the Zoom call, I just post them. You can go to patreon.com slash the creative imbalance. It's only four bucks a month. And beyond having my thanks, you can just go to bed at night and sleep soundly, knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw, uncut, independent media. And nobody can take that away from you. You hear me? With that being said, we got so many new episodes coming around the corner. I got a bunch recorded. All the editing I gotta do is giving me anxiety. But this is a good problem to have. Loving the momentum, loving the great guests we have, and the ball is going to keep rolling. So thanks for listening. Hit the sub if you're on YouTube. Hit the follow if you're on Spotify, Apple Music, and, or any of your favorite listening apps. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers!